Scarecrow. Come on, Nick. Push me higher, Sam screamed as she kicked her legs up in the air. She knew that she was getting to be too old for such playful frivolities. She was going to college in the fall, and this was her last time she would be hanging out at the family farm for a while. Nick obliged and pushed her higher in the old wooden swing attached to the huge oak tree. He had already gotten one year of college under his belt and was spending the summer with his family. His younger sister had insisted on them doing all the things they used to do as kids. It was exhausting trying to keep up with her. He was just wanting to have a nice, peaceful summer break, away from the city and deadlines of school. But he also wanted to hang out with his sister. He hadn't seen her since Christmas. All right, Sam, aren't you tired of this yet? He asked her while slowing down the swing. Oh yeah, I want to go on one of our nighttime walks through the cornfield. It will be great, just like old times. We will talk about life, get some exercise, she started. Get lost in the corn, Nick interjected. Yeah, like we used to. That was the most fun, she exclaimed. Nick sighed. The sun was beginning to set. Maybe this would satisfy her. He would get to resume a peaceful summer vacation tomorrow. Okay, but let's try to get back early enough to hang out with Mom and Dad. They were acting kind of funny tonight, he suggested. Yeah, they were, she said as she hopped off the swing. Actually, they've been acting kind of funny since I got back. All out of it or something. They weren't overjoyed to see me like they were at Christmas, he said sadly. Yeah. Well, they have been like that for a while now. It just keeps getting worse and worse, Sam confessed. They made it to the cornfield as Nick turned to Sam and stopped. Did something happen to them? Nick asked. I don't know. They really don't talk about much of anything anymore. They don't really do anything. I have to cook all the meals, do all the laundry. It's a miracle I graduated high school she said sadly. What do they say when they do talk? Nick asked. They talk nonsense about the scarecrow in the fields, Sam told him. The scarecrow? Nick asked, perplexed. Yep, they think it's talking to them, Sam said softly. Wow, they are losing it. I wonder if they're on drugs or something, Nick said thoughtfully. I don't know, maybe. Sam shrugged her shoulders and broke off in a run. Laughing wildly, she went straight into the cornfield. Hey, wait up! Nick hollered after her. Has everyone in this family gone mad? Nick wondered aloud. The sun was almost gone from sight as Nick headed into the cornfield. He knew he needed to find her and hurry out. They really would be lost in the corn if they didn't start heading back. At least the moon would be full tonight. That would light the way home good enough, but the cornfield, the cornfield was always so dark and scary anyway. They would scare themselves as children, wandering halfway through, screaming when they saw the scarecrow, and running all the way back home. They loved the thrill of being scared. It made them feel alive. Sam! Nick called as he entered. There was a nice pathway through but he still could not see much of what was around him or how far he was really going. Just then, he heard Sam's scream echo throughout the 200-acre farm. Nick picked up his pace. It was probably her reenacting their childhood adventures. She must have reached the scarecrow already. He heard footsteps behind him and turned around, but still walking. He couldn't see anyone. He turned around to run smack into a stalk of corn. Ouch! He rubbed his forehead. He turned to his right, and there it was in the center. It was like a huge, glaring monster surrounded by the stalks. Funny. It seemed bigger than the last time he saw it. 
Nick must have been smaller the last time he ventured into the fields. Had to be. There was no way a scarecrow could have gotten bigger. Unless Mom and Dad made him bigger. Nick stepped closer to the scarecrow. He squinted to see it more clearly. Wait a minute, Nick muttered to himself as he got even closer. There were a series of red stains all over the scarecrow's flannel shirt and denim overalls. His gloves were dripping with a red substance as well. Nick got out his phone and turned on the flashlight. As he shined it up to the scarecrow's face, he noticed something different about his head. There were red splotches on his face and some of the dripping substance spilling out the corner of his mouth. There was an eerie gurgling sound. The face looked gruesome. With big black holes for eyes, pale white face, and no kind of nose. The lips were thin and parted. The scarecrow's arm span was definitely wider than the last time Nick had seen it. Nick shuddered as he slowly brought the flashlight downward. To his utter shock, Nick then noticed the giant black boots. The boots that were touching the ground. The scarecrow was completely standing upright. It was not hanging like it used to. The sucker had to be over eight feet tall. Suddenly, one right boot slid across the ground. Nick turned to bolt, but stopped dead. Both his mother and father were standing there, pale-faced, staring at him mindlessly. We're so sorry, son, they said, but their mouths were not moving. Mom? Dad? Nick began shaking. We have to sacrifice two children as an offering to please our master, they said, completely monotone. What are you saying? Who is your master? Nick said, completely terrified. The scarecrow, his father said. Your sister is waiting for you on the other side. Run along now and die, his mother yelled. Nick turned to see the head of his sister lying on the ground as the scarecrow kicked it aside. Oh my God, Sam, Nick screamed. The scarecrow then lunged forward and in one giant swooping motion put one gloved hand on Nick's torso and the other on the top of his head. Nick did not have time to scream as his body and head were completely separated from one another, with the blood spilling out everywhere. The scarecrow smiled. We only live to please you, master. You have our children. What shall we do now? The couple asked the bloody scarecrow. Bring me more children. The couple nodded and headed back through the cornfield, completely oblivious of anything else, least of all that their children were just brutally murdered before their eyes. The scarecrow had showed up right after Christmas and haunted them every night until they obeyed to sacrifice their children. They had to bring both of them to the scarecrow on a summer night under a full moon. They had proven worthy of the scarecrow. Now, on to terrorize the world to keep him happy and keep him growing.